lastly, I would just uh, like to thank everybody who's over here and um, do watch out for us in this digital space. We are very excited to be over here and uh, we are pretty much certain that things will change. The legacy way of functioning will change. People will come over into the technological side, you know, from manual processes and uh, digital technology is the future. And here we are. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Uh, can we just get a quick round of applause for uh, three speakers on that uh, first session? Parag, Harish, and Ajay. Thanks, guys. So, uh, so this ne next topic is actually uh, uh, trends in um, supply chain analytics. Um, um, I'm going to be speaking uh, with Professor Sajeev George. Um, and uh, given that we're running about actually 45 minutes late, uh, I'm going to kind of say that we'll take uh, 15 minutes less than we'd originally planned uh, just to try and ca uh, catch up uh, on the, the schedule. So uh, I'm going to be talking about a very specific offering. I, I know the, uh, the topic here is trends in supply chain analytics. Uh, but I was given to understand uh, Professor George was going to kind of take a more generic view of the of the topic. So I'm going to be talking about a very specific offering from Chainalytics, um, which is called the Freight Market Intelligence Consortium. Uh, but I, I feel like it is a trend because uh, more and more uh, companies across the geographies uh, across the world are signing up for this offering uh, because of just how uh, path-breaking it is. Uh, can I get a quick show of hands for people who are directly involved in uh, transportation slash logistics uh, within your company? Okay, um, there's about uh, there's about eight or nine. So, uh, uh, like, like I said, I'm going to try and save some time here and go through these really quick. Uh, I'll take questions after the presentation. We actually have a booth as well. Uh, feel free to stop by the booth if you if you have any questions specific uh, to my presentation. So, so just in terms of what I want to cover, um, the agenda. Um, again, I'm going to go through this really quick in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, technology trends and the, the need for FMIC. Uh, FMIC is short for the Freight Market Intelligence Consortium. Uh, really quickly at, uh, look really quickly at FMIC history and the geographies that we cover. Uh, go through our unique approach, right, and uh, the key deliverables. And uh, finally, there's a couple of slides on uh, value proposition, right? So just in terms of you know, uh, technology in your business. I mean, these are kind of terms that we hear a lot of these days. Uh, the size of the text is is roughly proportional to the usage um, in uh, primarily over the World Wide Web. Uh, you know, you know, big data and analytics of late um, over the last, let's say, five five to ten years. Uh, there's been a big boom, right? I mean, people are talking about big data and analytics, but I, I believe big data is a, has, has existed since the advent of ERP systems. You know, ever since companies started implementing ERP systems, big data has been available to them. It's just that over the first several years, um, not much was being done with that big data. Um, and that's been true of, of the recent past as well. I mean, slowly companies are moving towards doing something with big data. Uh, and that's where the analytics comes in. So in terms of analytics, uh, there's descriptive analytics, right, which started a little bit earlier. But kind of the more advanced analytics uh, dealing with big data is more kind of the prescriptive and predictive analytics. So that's kind of where uh, this tool fits in, right? Uh, just a quick uh, kind of laying the context for what I'm about to talk um, what I'm about to discuss here, the, uh, the FMIC. What is the the need, right? I mean, I mean, what is the need for uh, freight benchmarking, right? 
So, I mean, there's a couple of statistics that I've thrown out here. Uh, the current state of the, uh, the Indian freight market, it's approximately 63%, and it's kind of been flat, you know, since 2008-9, and it's expected to be right around that, around 60, 65% going forward, looking forward into 2018-19. But, I mean, the, the percentage is overall movement of goods stayed fairly flat, but you're expecting, we're expecting about 13.3% uh, uh, cumulative growth uh, until 2020, right? And uh, growth is primarily being uh, led by a couple of sectors. I mean, e-commerce is booming in India, right? And also this, uh, this Make in India initiative, which is also going to kind of uh, result in more goods being transported across the country. Another interesting statistics uh, here at the bottom is uh, total logistics spend in India is about 14.5% of GDP. Uh, compared to other developing countries like uh, Brazil and China, it's much higher. So at, at, in Brazil, you're looking, for instance, at, at about 8% of GDP uh, as a total logistics spend. Right. So, so that kind of uh, uh, funnels into why uh, we'd need to benchmark freight in India. First of all, it's it's a significant spend, right? Uh, also, some additional factors. Highly fragmented. I mean, mom and pop uh, trucking companies who are running like two trucks, three trucks, uh, highly fragmented, right? And non-standard pricing. So it, it kind of is not really market-driven uh, in many ways. It's much more kind of relationships, who you know, uh, trucking unions, things like that. Um, as of now, there's a lower penetration of 3PL players, uh, which would kind of bring in some standardization. But that's probably going to change with the advent of GST. So with the advent of GST, there's probably going to be more of movements kind of long haul uh, across multiple states rather than just kind of within states or, or neighboring states. right? So some of the driving forces behind uh, a market focused competency like uh, FMIC, right? So I've just kind of, the way I've structured this slide is on, on the left, I've got um, sea level expectations and, and the challenges they face in realizing those expectations. So first of all, strong understanding of transportation markets, rates and capacity. I mean, the, the truth is uh, companies just don't have access to that information. I mean, we run procurement events in India um, and we've run you know, ab about a dozen of these. And, and companies firmly believe that they have the best freight rates in the market. And that simply is not the case. I mean, basically due to the, their frame of reference is that they think they've got great relationships. Uh, they've had relationships with these shipping, uh, with, these, um, with these transportation providers for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. And they firmly believe that they're getting the best rate without really looking outside, right? Uh, always drive costs from the network. Uh, yes, I mean, obviously they want to do that, but the reality is that they don't really have a picture of market capacity, right? Uh, unless and until they do a, a, a procurement event. And then what you find in new lanes enter route uh, suboptimally. Um, maximize uh, service and minimize spot rates. Uh, ag again, I mean, uh, Executives have very little information around whether it's a buyer's or seller's market at the time of bidding. So, so finally, uh, kind of the uh, uh, takeaway from this slide is there is an abundance of transportation data if, and that's a big caveat, if companies are willing to collaborate uh, in a consortium of some kind. So basically, it's you know uh, shippers getting together, providing their uh, shipment level information, uh, completely uh, anonymized, of course, but willing to collaborate to actually create an effective benchmark for the uh, transp transportation sector in India. So our solution, right? Chainalytics, Freight Market Intelligence Consortium. It's a cloud-based advanced analytical model using your logistics big data with visualizations around uh, uh, that, that enable um, effective decision making. Right? Uh, real quick uh, look at uh, FMIC uh, and a decade of growth. Uh, so we started in 2004, 
uh, with a single model. Now, when I say a single model, we, we do different models for different modes. So we have truckload, we have less than truckload, we have ocean, we have air, and so on. So we started with a single model with about seven members and about uh, 0.7 billion worth of uh, shipment spend, uh, freight spend, in 2004. And now in 2017, we have eight different models. Uh, we have 175 companies participating globally. And there's about $36 billion worth of freight spend in, this mo uh, in these models. Right? Uh, just in terms of uh, geographies, uh, so we've actually got models in four different regions. I mean, uh, what you're seeing there, uh, uh, it's, it's practically across the globe, but um, this doesn't necessarily mean we have a model in India. But what that means is there's freight movement in and out of India in one of our external models, right? So, uh, quick, uh, I, I want to spend some time on the approach here because uh, that's really the key and that's really our selling point. It's, it goes back to my thing around uh, the, the predictive, uh, predictive nature of the analytics around big data. Uh, just a quick look at the, the process. So, so what we're asking of members is, is basically to provide a data template that we then clean and validate and then we either confirm or revise uh, the data that's been provided. And, and the data that we ask for is very simple, really. It's, it's, it's really just uh, a transactional history of all of your shipment data uh, from uh, all of your kind of plants and uh, warehouses to your eventual customers. Uh, so we, clear, we go through a validation process. Kind of the, uh, the w what we really do here uh, is the, the econometric modeling. And, and I've got a couple of slides on that to walk you through. That basically then gives you the output, like the lane reports, the carrier reports, and then things like um, the industry report and the surveys and so on, right? And then we publish that, uh, and it really depends. I mean, uh, we've got quarterly models and we've got uh, semi-annual models. Uh, it really depends on how frequently the truckload market is changing. But in, in India, we anticipate we'll start with uh, a biannual model where we'll pr publish these reports twice a year. So what, I mean, uh, when we talk about e econometric modeling or, or regression modeling, it, it's, it's commonly known as line fitting. I mean, a lot of you are probably aware of, of this type of modeling. But essentially, it's uh, a predictive model to kind of say, uh, what are the different independent factors on one side uh, that's basically affecting uh, a dependent factor on the other side? So the dependent factor in this case being uh, the, the cost that you pay to transport a given product on a given mode from point A to point B, right? And there's a, there's, there's a variety of independent factors. I, mean, I, I think in some of these models, we have upwards of 100 uh, independent variables. But primarily, uh, they, they capture what uh, uh, a carrier pricing approach would uh, take into consideration. So where does a lane start and end? What are the service and equipment expectations? What is the lane volume uh, spot versus contract? I mean, those are kind of the major considerations uh, that go into the econometric model. So I've got a, uh, just kind of a, a graphic here which uh, should, should help it explain better. Uh, so so th this first slide is basically saying, uh, it, it's basically all the data that's come to us, right? So it's come from 10 plus shippers, uh, 3,000 loads per year. And it's all data with a variety of uh, kind of uh, independent factors on the right. So it's, it's all data that we've received. But uh, from our predictive econometric model, if, if we wanted to kind of look at what is the rate for a certain type or certain selection of these independent factors. So in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm using, if you look on the right, I'm using direct regular uh, asset uh, and, and primary and outbound and, uh, equipment and, and contract. So for that, uh, we're saying there's a, a predicted rate of about 2.6. And this is, of course, so this is a US model. So it's, it's $2.6 per mile uh, is the predicted rate that's coming out of the model. Now, for a, for a slightly different kind of uh, selection of criteria, right? Uh, we're going with a, with a broker rather than an owned asset. Uh, what we get for the same origin destination is 3.1, right? 
So that's kind of the essence of the, the economic uh, econometric uh, predictive modeling is basically th with the data we have, we're basically able to see how the independent, independent variables kind of uh, correlate to one another as well as uh, how, it, how they influence uh, a dependent variable, uh, in this case being cost. Uh, key deliverables. Uh, so, so obviously the most interesting one or the, you know, the big sell for this would really be the, uh, the what we've got is a, is, a, is a web portal where you can type in, let's say, Mumbai to Delhi uh, for a certain type of truck and you'd get uh, an estimate from, uh, from the model on exactly how much that would cost. We also have the option of an IFMI rate server. So basically this would be if you, if a member signed up for a rate server to be plugged in directly to their systems, um, they could just go directly to that and, and load a whole, uh, a bunch of rates. So uh, probably 500 different type uh, origin destination mode combinations and uh, a report would come out with the market rate for each of those. Right, and then we've also got, uh, uh, like I said, we publish on a semi-annual basis the surveys and the industry reports. And there's uh, opportunities to collaborate with other members as well. Um, and, and there's a couple of uh, examples here that I'll go through, uh, specifically the, uh, the carrier database and the lane matching. And with all, uh, what goes without saying is that for uh, each member, there's kind of we go through a detailed look at their results uh, on a biannual basis and with any necessary uh, orientation and training and basically um, teach them how to uh, review those reports. So uh, just an example, and, and I'll go through these really quickly. Uh, this is an example of our uh, real-time rate estimator. So you basically uh, log in to the FMIC web portal, right? Uh, every member's got a unique uh, ID and password, and you can go in and put in your origin destination and all of the different uh, independent variables that would actually influence um, the cost. And then uh, you immediately um, get uh, a rate per kilometer or a rate uh, for a, a specific equipment type. Uh, just examples of uh, you know the reports uh, that we uh, publish on a semi-annual basis. So this one is the, uh, the truckload survey results. And we've also got kind of a broader uh, state of truckload transportation, which is kind of a more uh, kind of what is the outlook for 